Welcome to the Christian Church on this Sunday afternoon, August the 17th, 2014. We are here and we're thankful for God for getting us through another week. Uh, there's always challenges, there's always trials, but God is faithful to bring us back to the place where he wants us to hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen? Amen. Whether it's your personal time of reading the Bible or whether it's time for the teaching and preaching of the Word of God, God is faithful to bring us where we need to be. Amen. We need to trust in him more. I thank God that he's allowed me the privilege of preaching and teaching the gospel and trying to do it to the best of my abilities to do it in a way that is uncorrupted and unpolitical. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want the gospel to be tainted because my Lord is untainted. And so he gives his servants and those who truly love him the ability to be a witness into the earth of the unadulterated truth of the word of God. And so we've been talking about the word, defending the word, talking about the fact that God has preserved his word forever. As we read from Psalms 12 last week, we found out that the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve thy word forever. You understand? And then it talked about how the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. When people put wicked presidents in office, when people put people in places that aren't serving God, then you have wickedness abounding everywhere because those people who are supposed to be in places where God is a, can use them to bring forth righteousness in the earth, these people have instead sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And they don't deserve our support or anybody else's support. Republican or Democrat makes no difference. And if both of them are evil, we, as God's people, just as we exercise the freedom to vote can exercise the freedom not to vote, amen? Because whether you vote or not, that doesn't make you a saint. That doesn't make you acceptable in the eyes of God, especially if you're voting for someone that you know is evil and you know has evil policies coming into place. And in this case, we didn't have the opportunity to make a right choice in our last election because both candidates are working for the devil. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the truth of the matter. And the lesser of two evils is still evil. And evil is evil in the sight of God and will get you into destruction and into the judgment and punishment of God if you do not repent. Those that are in office, the word for them is repent before it's too late. Even if you have to go against those who put you there, whatever the price is, there is no price like the price you'll pay if you die in your sins unrepentant before God. Because the enemy will try to take you out when you're serving God. Because the devil doesn't want the kingdom of God to be manifest in the earth. You understand what I'm saying? The devil wants to wreak havoc in the midst of the people here on earth. And so he has kings, he has presidents, and oh yes, he even has pastors and apostles and bishops set up in the house of the in the house of God, in the church. He has set up his wicked people there so that wickedness can abound in the church because people are putting adulterous pastors in the office. People are, are allowing apostles and bishops who are not blameless, who are not obeying what the word of God says they should follow if they want to be a leader, if they want to be an elder or bishop or deacon or whatever they want to be. The word of God has set forth principles that we must live by. And if we don't live by the principles of God, you are going to be a candidate for the judgment of God. Because there's more strict judgment coming upon those that are in places of leadership. Amen? 
That's why as a father in my home, if I don't become the man that God has created me to be and rule my home well with love by setting an example for my wife and for my children, and she is not inferior to me, she is equal to me in the eyes of God. It doesn't matter if we have different responsibilities. I'm not superior to her, and she's not superior to me. We were made for each other. You understand what I'm saying? Husband and wife uh, in a threefold cord, meaning God coming in, is not quickly broken. You understand what I'm saying? When God gets into the midst of a marriage, he can turn it into something that is beautiful and representative of his relationship with the church through Christ. Amen? Amen? The Bible says that the head of Christ is God. The head of woman is man, and the head of man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. That doesn't make man superior to the woman. It means that man has is going to be held more accountable when it comes to the responsibility of guiding the affairs of the home. It doesn't mean that the woman is just subservient to the man. No, it means that the man has a responsibility to love his wife as even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Even as Christ sanctified us through the washing of the water of the word, so must I preach the word of God to my wife and to my children that she may be sanctified and that they may be sanctified through the washing of water by the word when they surrender to Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost stirs their heart up with truth. And the joy of the Lord comes bubbling out of them and the manifestation of the power of God is evident in my wife and in my children as well as in me. Amen? Amen? That is what proper relationship is. And so many people have butchered the verses of the word of God because they've used it to support male chauvinism and all kinds of sexism and things. When this scripture was not put here for that purpose. The scriptures are put here to say that the man needs to be in a place spiritually to lead his family. That means he must have a right relationship with God. If he does not, he cannot lead. You understand what I'm saying? A woman that is in right standing with God has more power to lead than a man that has gone astray. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we see situations where there are women that have leadership. Not all women are serving God. Don't get me wrong. There's corrupt women leaders in the church as well as corrupt men leaders. But in the Lord, God says whoever it is that's leading has a responsibility to carry out the truth of the word. And their conduct and their character must match that. If it doesn't, they can't lead. You understand what I'm saying? And if the man is in a place spiritually that he should be, then he is in position to lead, both in his home and in the church of the Lord. Because it takes strong men. We as men must carry out the spiritual responsibility of leading by example. And yes, our home is our ministry, not the building, but our homes as it relates to our wives and our children. We serve God first. We put God in the place that he belongs and that's first place in our lives. And God will show us how to rule the affairs of our home. And then the church comes after that and the fellowship of the saints. And then our relationship to the world around us. How we live with integrity and character and shine as lights in this world. In this dark world, we must shine as lights, amen? We must shine brightly so that men will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. The only way that happens is if we're in right standing with God. And so we're going to go to Titus chapter number 1. And we're going to read with Paul the letter that Paul wrote to Titus just as Paul wrote letters to Timothy. 
Paul has also wrote letters to Titus. And in this particular Titus chapter 1, this letter that Paul has written is dealing with the fact that we must have leadership in place that is following God with all their heart. Because at the end of the chapter, we'll see how those that are unclean have even turned and gone reprobate as it relates to the faith. And yet they're still pastoring. They're still in places of leadership. And that's why we have these scandals breaking out. Because these people have turned their backs on God. And they expect everybody to be compassionate and say, well, all of us fall short. Well, you know what? You need to fall short right outside of the pulpit if you can't stay faithful in your marriage. Amen. Fall short somewhere else. You don't need to be falling short, standing up, trying to tell other people how to live. Amen. Amen. How can you get the speck? How can you get the mode out of your brother's eye? When there's a beam in your own eye, Jesus forbade it. You understand in Matthew 7, where it says, judge not. It was talking about hypocritical judgment, not righteous judgment. Because the Bible tells us to judge righteous judgment. We're not to judge according to the outward appearance, Jesus said. But we are to judge righteous judgment and beware of false prophets. But we're going to Titus chapter number one. It says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began but have in the times manifested his word through preaching as I turn the page here through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior to Titus mine own son after the common faith grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Paul treated Titus as if he was his own son. He wasn't his biological son, but he said, my son in the faith. Now, this is different than what you see in some churches where you have pastors and priests and people calling themselves their spiritual fathers and mother. Paul is just making an analogy here. Paul is not saying he's the boss over Titus. You understand what I'm saying? Or he's his dad. But he loves him just like a father would love a son. And he's exhorting him in the gospel. And yet people have taken this and religiously set up strongholds and put people in bondage. But the truth must be proclaimed. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So it was the job of Titus to ordain elders in every city that he came across. That Paul had given him the authority to ordain elders. And Paul gets his authority from the word of God. You understand? So we're going to get into the qualifications. And yes, it's going to use a man here, but only because of the simple fact that God wants men to be in a place spiritually where they can carry this out. And we know that because of whatever circumstances, we live in a time where there are men and women. God is not condemning women simply because they're in a place of leadership, because there's a reason for it, and God knows. But whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, if you call yourself a servant of Christ, there are rules and guidelines that you must come under and if you're going to lead God's people you have to have the integrity and character to lead 
If you are found wanting or lacking this integrity and character, you are not qualified to lead God's people because you are going to become a stumbling block when people see you fall. You understand? Because people are influenced by the people. That doesn't make it right. But that's the way it is in this world. People like to follow other people. And if you're not careful, you could get yourself into a big jam and a big mess. Spiritually, emotionally, and even physically and financially following after people. Especially if these people are not following Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife... Having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly. It's just giving you some qualifications. It doesn't mean that if you don't have children, you can't be an elder or a bishop. That is not the case because Paul did not have any children, yet Paul was called to be an apostle. So we know this isn't saying that every elder must have children. It's not saying every elder must be married. That is not what it is saying. But what it is saying is that every elder must be blameless. You understand? That means if they've committed sins in the past, they have repented of their sins, God has cleansed them, and now they're following Jesus with all their heart. This isn't saying that a person is sinless because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. But what it is saying is that your conduct and character has become of a saint. As become of a follower of Jesus Christ must be found. You must be found walking in integrity. You understand? Before they put you there, there must be some type of a trial and test where people can look at how you're living and seeing that you're following Jesus with all your heart. Wake up. You, you understand what I'm saying? You must be following Christ. And you must be living a different life than you used to live. And fruits of repentance must be manifest in your life before you think about leading anyone. Now, as a father and a husband, I'm responsible for my family. I can't push that responsibility off on someone else. And if my wife is able to lead, she is able to lead because I am setting the example by my leadership. So that she can guide the house and the children because we're both walking on one accord based on the principles of the word of God. So if I'm not here, my wife can bring down, break the order in my home as if I was right there next to her because we're walking in step with God's word when Eve abandoned God's word she fell into the sin and she had just carried out what Adam had told her what God had told Adam and then Adam told her then we would not have had the problems that we had in the Garden of Eden you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. so me and my wife are walking together beside each other not her behind me but I'm leading just as a, in a position of leading by example but we are equal in the sight of God and if I'm not doing right God will chastise me just as quick as he'll chastise her you understand what I'm saying but his chastisement is a whole lot better than his judgment you understand so when God corrects us and we receive his correction it shows that we're loved of him you understand God's in control here for a bishop must be blameless. I don't hear churches talking about this. They want to go to the second thing and say, oh, it must be a husband, so it has to be a male. Let's get the first one down, Pat. How many bishops you know are blameless? See, we got to get through number one before we can go to number two, three, four, or five. You understand what I'm saying? If they can't get the first thing right, then no need in trying to look at the other steps. 
because they got to be walking in a place where God says sees them as being blameless. You understand what I'm saying? And the only way you can do that is to come under the authority of Jesus Christ. And his blood cleanses you from all sin. Amen?